Yeah, my car's battery is a bit iffy, so I got the old carbon pile tester out to test it to see whether there was charging or what was going on. And I thought yeah, it might be quite interesting to um, just open this thing up and have a bit of a think about how it works. Um, you probably most people have seen these things when your car battery is not holding its charge or it's not starting well your car, then the mechanics will use something like this. So you've got your heavy duty crop clips, a black one and a red one obviously going to positive terminals and you have to make a very good contact onto the battery. But um, the idea is that you um, turn this knob and as you turn this knob it applies more current via a carbon pile and you can see the current rating amperes up here. That's a straightforward amp reading of what you're discharging from the battery. As you tighten this you see the amps go up and as you loosen it obviously it will go down. And inside there is a timer that after it's been energised at a certain power, it heats up and it goes open circuit to stop the carbon pile overheating. So it's a sort of test you can do, then you have to wait a little while and do it again. You can't just do it one after the other. Not that you really want to because the battery would get successively flatter. Okay, um, But it's quite a useful piece of kit. And um, so as I say, there's the this is the battery state, um, the battery voltage on the top and then the various state I, statuses or what you want to call them, on that side. And on this side you've got I'll just zoom in so you can see this a bit better because you can see. So, if you don't want to use the absolute ampage um, use, you can look at, say, if it's a 65 amp hour battery, then it's saying basically turn this knob up until the current gets up to 65 and then do the test as it says on the front, which we'll talk about in a minute. And this one is a battery cold crank rating, so on your battery is a CCA rating, so you could, if it's rated to 450 or 500 cca you'd wind this up and set it at 500 so there's that's the way of doing it if you know the current that you're looking for this is a way by um, checking how far to wind up the current if you know the amp average of the battery and this is um, if you want to do a cold start test um, cold cranking amp so if the battery is rated at 550 or 500 you'd wind it up to here and then wait the uh, the appointed time as on the instructions on the front uh, um, and see whether your battery is any good. So the first step, step one, is to look and see what battery you've got and then work out how far you're going to wind this up because you can't really do the test unless you know how far you're going to go with it. You just can't keep on winding because you might accidentally fail your battery even though the battery is probably okay. So, um, so that's step one. You know how far you're going to turn this knob at the bottom knob here to make this go up. And then on this side you've got the actual battery status display and you can see it's um, if after this period here it says first step check battery status of charge so if we look on here it says don't test it um, if it's in the red okay I think is that right yeah, so yeah, basically when you connect it up to start with, this is the alternator test at the bottom, so that's when it's charging, so we can ignore this one for the time being. And then when you first connect it, if it doesn't spin up into the uh, green zone, then the battery is not charged, yeah, because the voltage has gone below what's considered to be a charged battery, therefore um, the test will be invalid. And of course if you've charged your battery up and you, it's been charging and charging and charging, then you disconnect it for half an hour and you then put this machine on it and it doesn't come up into this green zone on this second um, dial here then the battery is already knackered before you even start the test all right so because it's not maintaining the correct minimum voltage of a, a healthy battery that's the theory and um, so then what you do is you connect your battery up make sure it's properly connected you can see this spin up you can see it's okay to test really so you're ready to, you have to make sure first before you connect the battery this is undone so it's off okay if you connect it up while it's wound up eight you'll get big sparks and it will invalidate your test so um, yeah so you then connect the red to the red and the positive and whatever and make sure you've got good connections and it should come up into this okay to test zone in which case then you can then follow the next instruction so it's check battery status of charge Apply low to battery equal to half the cold cranking amperage or three times the hour rating. So if it's a 65 hour battery, amp hour battery, you would make it 195 amps. All right. um, and if it's a 600 amp cold cranking amp battery, then you'd wind it up to 300 amps on the top scale. Right. 
um, this is the amp hour rating of the uh, battery itself so don't get confused with that and that if you do this calculation down here then you're using the top scale on there if you're going from the amp average of your battery then you this gives you a rough guide and if you're going from the cold cranking amps the battery then this gives you a rough guide rough guide where to wind it up to all right so then you wind it up hold load voltage for 15 seconds so you wind up to your set current hold the voltage for 15 seconds and then read it says read voltage but what you're not reading voltage really is you're reading the battery condition so that's a bit of a mistake um, after 15 seconds your battery should still be in the green at these temperatures all right so obviously if it's a warmer 21 degrees then it's more um, it should the battery should perform better so that it steps up and so after your 15 seconds you look to see and you'll see this start dropping down as the battery starts to sag under the load and it should when it's the test is finished it should be in the green and which means your battery's okay all right so that's how it works so that's some um, so I'll look inside and we'll see what's in there shall we I've never looked inside one of these um, what have we got well it's on the graph here and a temperature compensation chart so if you've got really low um, temperatures then this this is the volts you then if the temperatures aren't what it says on here if you're below the minimum temperature here you then refer to this chart and then you can apply this voltage to the top so basically what happens is the okay chart the um, replace okay th uh, gauge moves across that way okay so you would use this this value here on the voltage scale if you're at low temperature you ignore the replace OK battery scale then you would refer to this and then work out the voltage and the against your uh, temperature and uh, in Fahrenheit and uh, so you can be more tolerant of a cold battery if it's very a cold otherwise you'd throw it out and it wouldn't necessarily be a bad battery all right so how does this work all right okay so some screws in the front so four screws by the look of it on the old pile tester my piles tested before. The other thing is, it gets quite hot. If you think you're 200 amps at 12 volts, that's nearly 2 kilowatts of power being drawn out. Only 15 seconds, but it's enough to. <clears throat> you can feel the heat coming off it that way, and it smells a bit as well, and there's oil or something in there. But it's very handy. My son got stuck on the motorway because um, his battery was okay to start the car and run the car, but he got he got held up in a traffic jam and he just sat there with the radio and the side lights on. And within half an hour, the battery was flat and he suddenly was stuck on the on the motorway with a a flat battery, um, which is not good, not good at all. Let's try that one. That one's a cheap Poundland screwdriver in the. Uh, shaft is going around in the handle. Right, so four screws out. Let's have a look see what's inside her, shall we? Does that come off now? Yeah, okay. So let's lay it on the face. Face down, that's what we want to. So not much at all really. Actually some electronics in it as well. LM358 is an op amp. There's a buzzer anyway. A couple of three transistors, two capacitors, a fuse. Fuse. Uh, not much at all. I'm guessing that's the timer circuit, capacitor, and resistor there on that bit. So, anyway, what have we got? What have we got? Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. You can see a bit better. Right. So, what we've got is the Current cables coming in here and here from the battery, these big heavy cables. They look alright, don't they? They're nicely crimped on there. They've done a good job of this actually for a cheap machine. And then what we've got is the current going through this piece of strip, and that's the shunt. And when there's 200 amps going across there, it'll generate enough voltage across here to put power onto the current meter, the ammeter. So the ammeter needs some voltage across here to make the meter deflect, the needle deflect. Clearly, you can't have all the power going through, so you have a very low resistance shunt. And when you 
stick the current on, then the voltage will be generated across these terminals, which will drive the uh, the ammeter. And then that thing there, sewn in or soldered into the wire, that thing is a potentiometer. Look, they've just used that to calibrate the ammeter by you know cutting out the current and uh, tweaking that to get the right current reading. And then over here is the voltmeter and the timer electronics. All right. Um, so this this bit here is the interesting bit. This is the carbon pile, and literally. <laughs> All it is, is if I tilt it down somewhere where you can see it, easier said than done, about that way. Oh, there we are, look. Um, so you've got these two plates here on the spring, and as you can see, as I, as I tighten this knob, you can see it um, tighten up, and as you tighten it up, the plates are squashed harder and harder together, and the resistance drops and the current increases. So that's all it is, it's just a pile of carbon discs. Graphite probably. See? I, guess you get some sp I bet you see some sparking in there when you first uh, engage the current. But as you open it up the resistance just drops away to virtually nothing and it doesn't conduct any electricity. The, uh, it's got ceramic insulators to stop it burning it and also to stop any shorting on the frame. So that's a carbon pile and the old um, original telephones that they used to make used to have um, carbon granule microphones in them where there's just a little sack full of carbon granules and as you spoke it it um, vibrated the di diaphragm against the carbon pack of, mol of um, granules and the carbon would change um, resistance and obviously generating a voltage to go down the telephone line that's how the old telephone lines used to work before they had the electrons in them so carbon granule microphone so it's along the same principle as that but it's a convenient way of um, getting very low uh, resistance, presumably quite cheap as well. So that's all that's inside, not much to see really. I think these strips here, these things are just simple connectors to connect the pile up to the battery. It is a bit strange, isn't it? Because the, oh I see, the output from the pile comes down that peak, that, oh it has to be a spring, doesn't it? Because it's going up and down, can you see that? You can see that moving as I turn it, this part I'm talking about. Yeah, so that's just a spring contact, so they made the moving plate of the carbon pile to uh, connect up to the frame to allow the current to flow through. So, that's your pile driver, boys. It's quite good, isn't it? Anyway, so um, the reason I'm showing you this is in the next video I've got a uh, jump start box from Lidl, because I thought I'd like one. And I was just going to do a test, and I realised that it's supposed to be able to supply 75 amps for three seconds while you turn the key. So we need to work out a way of stuffing 75 amps through it and see with the test equipment, see whether it actually does what it says on the packet. Um, so that's in the next video, is the review of the Lidl, um, the Lidl Jump Starter Stroke 14 amp um, charger box. Um, and that's it really, so if you wanna subscribe down there, <laughs> I hope you found that interesting. I did, I've never taken one apart, so it's interesting to see what's in there. And that's your um, your carbon pile battery tester. And then if you look in the next video, which is coming up in a day or so, we'll be using this in anger with a battery and with the legal battery charger on a car. Um, and then we can um, you'll understand what's going on with this box. Well, if you're curious about what's inside something when you see someone twiddling a knob, I normally am. But if you could subscribe down there when the video is loaded up with the full test that using utilizing this, to test the uh, the Lidl jump starter box, then uh, you'll get a notification. So thanks for watching, and I hope you find that interesting.